Fox joining us right now, Mercedes Schlapp, is a friend of mine and a friend of yours, Tom Fitton, and he runs Judicial Watch, and uh, Judicial Watch is a friend of the American people and the truth, I'll have you know, and transparency. Tom, thanks for joining us. Larry Mercedes, good to be with you both. I know that you were glued to these hearings yesterday with um, IRS whistleblower number two, now Mr. Ziegler. Boy, boy, the way Democrats treat uh, the truth and transparency and whistleblowers seems real different when it's one of their guys under fire. That's right. Well, you know, comparatively speaking, uh, Democrats wouldn't even allow Republicans to participate in the process, as we know, with the January 6th hearing. Yeah. Uh, you know, they froze them out unless they were willing to actually pretend to be Democrats like Liz Cheney and Kinzinger were. But, you know, this is, um, you know, dramatic evidence. And I don't recall a committee hearing like this ever before in the sense of getting a behind the scenes insight into, you know, we all kind of know that the corruption to protect Biden and other officials happens, right? Yeah. You know, but now we have the details uh, that, uh, frankly, is enough for a grand jury investigation if we had a competently and um, fairly won Justice Department. And you, you so mean we're, with we're, we're we're into the area of criminal activity now? It looks like. And specific, and specific, I just want to be specific here. You're talking about obstruction of justice, right? Because that's, I mean, we, we've got, somebody's lying. Either Merrick Garland, who continues to claim that David Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware, had full reign and he could bring whatever charges he wanted, or these two IRS whistleblowers who said, no, 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 David Weiss told us the exact opposite. That means someone's obstructing and also someone's lying. Well, and the same goes for David Weiss. Is he misleading Congress and suggesting he had this ultimate authority uh, when, in fact, he didn't? And, you know, the IRS whistleblowers highlight active actions by uh, officials in the Justice Department to thwart the investigation. You know, we need details as to why those actions took place. Uh, the Democrats pretend, well, you know, there's just disagreement about, yeah. you know, prosecutorial moves and between investigators and such. No, these are disagreements within the prosecution team. Uh, and they wanted to talk to a hunter. Uh, they wanted to talk to Joe. They wanted to talk to other family members who were benefiting from evidently illicit money, and they were prevented from doing so. And I, I, I don't see a reason that's been presented even by the left to suggest that was appropriate to do to thwart uh, this obstruct, really, investigations into something that they said, by the way, was being fairly and thoroughly investigated by an independent entity, uh, U.S. Attorney Weiss up in somewhere in Delaware. Tom, was there any was there any moment in the hearing where you felt, you know, this is the you know, this is the eye opener, right? This is the moment that you're saying the whistleblowers, they've got a strong case or coming across being credible and the Democrats have no standing here. And then what will happen, obviously, after this hearing? I think one of the frustration, at least with the grassroots activists that I'm hearing is where, where's the accountability? Well, I forget the name. I think it was a Congresswoman Brown, a Congresswoman Brown who complained about equity in IRS audits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This I, is I what that was a sign. That was a sign they had lost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lost the thread of well, the argument. They, they also, at the same the time, thing. you're right. You're so right. And they also made the case that you know you, you Republicans keep saying two tiers of justice. Um, that th- 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 those words are meant about for the George Floyd's of the world or the Tra- Trayvon Martins of the world. You keep saying it, and it's it's you know it's racial appropriation or something like that. It's like oh real, oh, this is where we are. Okay, you, you've you've said yeah, enough. Yeah, I mean the, the, them playing the race card, um, uh, you know, showed some desperation. Uh, and, and, you know, the, that's a good question. What, what, is, what are the Republicans going to do about this? This is another hearing further confirming um, reasons to impeach Trump, uh, Biden, right? What, what's yep. the excuse not to impeach Biden now or to impeach Garland I mean, well, wh- or to have a wide-ranging impeachment inquiry? If I were them, I would escalate all the investigations they're doing. They keep on doing them, but it's all part of an impeachment inquiry. Yeah. And uh, certainly they should be... Um, bringing in immediately an emergency basis. They're, quote, negotiating the appearances of Weiss and Garland, I guess, right now. But what are they waiting for? I mean, what's there to negotiate? They have a hearing within a week and get it done. You know, uh, I don't know. I, I just feel like they want to have hearings and they don't want to kind of do the hard work involved in the accountability. And 
it's been months. I've been advocating that they move into the penalty phase, whether it be referrals for criminal uh, investigation, defunding certain positions, impeachment, you name it. Uh, I'm not seeing any signs from um, Republican leadership that they're going to be aggressive on any of those issues. Um, Tom, can you stick with us? There was so much that happened yesterday, and I want to bounce some some more off of you. Great. Uh, Tom Finn, Judicial Watch. He just rhetorically asked what's stopping uh, the process to impeach Joe Biden. And and I know it was rhetorical, but my initial answer is the well, Kamala Harris is that that that's. (laughs) That's the insurance policy. But that shouldn't stand in the way of actually following the truth and following justice. And if the only remedy here is impeachment of Joe Biden, then you need to move forward with that. Uh, We've got more with Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch, on yesterday's IRS hearings in just a moment. Investigators were not allowed to follow up on WhatsApp messages from Hunter Biden's Apple iCloud backup, where he suggested he was sitting next to his father. Assistant United States Attorney Leslie Wolf cited the optics of executing a search warrant at President Biden's residence as a deciding factor for not allowing it, even though she agreed that probable cause existed. Oh, the optics. They were worried about the optics. By the way, that was before he was a president. He was uh, only the nominee, September of 2020, when they wanted to do that search warrant. Worried about the optics. Boy, they didn't worry about the optics when they raided Mar-a-Lago in the middle of the morning. Uh, What about all the gun-drawn raids on people in Robert Mueller's investigation with the FBI and 30 agents plowing? They didn't worry about the optics. What about Mark Houck, Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch? Mark Houck, a man who was just praying in front of a plan Parenthood uh, abortion clinic in Philadelphia, and they sent 30 armed FBI agents into his house at six in the morning, terrorizing his child. Didn't worry about the optics then, did they? But, oh, we can't have bad optics with Biden. I'm outraged by this. Oh, yeah. And and by the way, the FBI, according to reports, I don't know how honest the FBI is being here. You know, they objected to the uh, FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago. They were told to uh, engage in by political operatives uh, and and Biden allies at the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, people talk about double standard of justice. I think the better way to think about it is, no, they're being perfectly consistent. (laughs) Jail jail and abuse your political enemies and protect your friends. That's a single standard of justice. So Gary, not being hypocritical, they're they're doing they're they're being straightforward. We're Mm -hmm. not going to go after our friends and we're going to target you. Yeah. I think, and Gary Shapley, he mentioned uh, at one point, he said, I watch U.S. Attorney Weiss tell leaders he was not the deciding factor if charges should be brought. And he said then, that was my red line. So are we seeing just a very unique case here? Is this something we've seen in the past? Or truly, this is the DOJ just overstepping, you know, their authority? Uh, and, and what what? criminal charges could be brought against these DOJ officials? I mean, considering that they're the ones, you know, kind of in charge. Well, if they were lying to Congress, you know, in theory, you know, that's supposed to be a crime. And Steve Bannon, Hmm. who is convicted of of doing that allegedly, you know, because of not lying, but to uh, obstructing a congressional investigation. Obstructing justice. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, you know, but, you know, as you mentioned that, we have to go back. The key issue has been what did Hunter do for Burisma, right? Yeah. That mm-hmm. was supposed to be under investigation. What was going on there? This Justice Department found incontrovertible evidence that the monies that Hunter got were, uh, were, were not paid. You know, he didn't pay taxes on it. Now, all of that was taking place while Joe was vice president, or much of it was taking place while Joe was vice president. So by walling off any any charges related to his Burisma income, they protected Joe. Yep. I mean, because it's it's about his role as vice president. And, in subs- and I, I don't know how much more clear uh, we need to be that, you know, the Hunter story obviously is important. But it's only, you know, he'd be only, you know, he'd be a corrupt figure in D.C., just one of many, but for the fact that all the evidence points to Joe and they were prevented from investigating Joe Biden as a candidate, the deep state DOJ and FBI. Remember, some of this was under the Trump administration and key decisions that could have implicated Joe necessarily um, if they were pursued in court. Uh, were uh, prevent you know prevent protected Joe in the sense that yeah. a lot of these um, 
uh, charges were dropped as a result of them waiting too long. Yeah, and Tom Fitton, uh, Judicial Watch, uh, thank you for joining us. You just made a perfect point. The Democrats kept saying, oh, a lot of this happened when Trump was president, so what's your beef? And it's like, thank you for proving our point. That's the whole mm-hmm. point. This is the mm-hmm. deep state weaponization of the government for political purposes, regardless of who the president is. That's the problem. Thank you for enforcing it, uh, reinforcing it. Thank you, Tom. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you. We've got more on this later in the program. Virginia Fox, Congresswoman Virginia Fox, will join us on it.